Welcome to this YSL Report Builder 2016 tutorial. In this part of the series, we'll quickly explain how you can create repeating and scrolling table headers in a report. We'll begin by looking at how to make column headers in a table appear on each page of the report, followed by how to make those column headers scroll down the page as you scroll down with a mouse. And then we'll explain at the end of the video how you can do the same thing when you have multiple header rows in the same table. Not much to do in this one, but let's get started. To get started, I have a blank report in Report Builder, and I'm going to create a data source which points to the Wiseal Movies database. As always, if you don't have access to that database yet, we do have a video which explains exactly how to install it, and that video has a link in its description which will get you a script to help with that. Assuming you've got to that part already, let's insert a new data source into our report by right-clicking Data Sources and choosing Add Data Source. You may already have a shared data source from a previous video in this series, and you're more than welcome to use that one for this particular example. Just assuming you haven't got one of those data sources already, we can quickly create an embedded data source by typing in a new name, choosing to use an embedded connection, clicking the Build button, typing in a server name, mine's SQL 2016 Training, and then I can select my database name from the drop-down list. We've covered this technique in far more detail in a previous video of the series, so you can always refer back to the playlist to find that one if you're not sure what's going on here. I'm going to click OK a couple of times, and then I can right-click on my movie's data source that I've just created and choose to add a data set. I'll call this data set something simple like Films, and then I can use my Query Designer to build it. From my Tables list, I'm going to choose the Film table, and then I'm going to include a few fields from there. Let's include the title, the release date, the runtime minutes, and maybe the Oscar wins as well. At that point, I can click OK, click OK again, and now I'm ready to start building my report. I'll remove the default header text box by right-clicking on it and choosing Delete, and then I can right-click and choose to insert a new table. I'll just position that in the top left-hand corner of the page, and then I can begin assigning fields to the table using one of the several standard techniques. I'll use the field selector to select the first three fields, and then I can drag the Oscar wins field from the data set into the table, attaching it to the right-hand side. I'll modify some column widths a little bit. I know my titles are quite wide, so I'm going to change the width of that column by clicking and dragging. I'm going to edit some of my uh, column headers, or at least one of my column headers, so I'll, I'll change runtime minutes so that it's just called runtime. I'll also apply a, a different date format to the release date column, so I'm going to right click on the release date field, and then I'm going to choose text box properties, and then from the number page of the dialog box I can choose date, and then choose one of the built-in date formats. I'll go with one that, that will be fairly obvious regardless of what region you're reading this in. So I'm going to go with one that describes the month name in short there, like so. Having done that, I'm going to apply a basic background colour to the title row. So I'm going to select the header row by clicking the grey box to the left, and then just use the fill tool, the fill colour tool, to select a pale blue colour. And there we go, there's the basics of setting up that report. Let's give it a quick run, make sure it looks reasonably sensible. And there we go, those are our results. We can see that the table has some column headers already, but the sad thing is that those column headers only appear at the top of the very first page. If I scroll to the next page using the next page button, those headers disappear immediately. Likewise, if I scroll back to the first page and then scroll down the page using the mouse button, the headers scroll off the top of the page. So it's difficult to tell what I'm actually looking at beyond the top of the very first page of the report. The first thing I'd like to do is try to make these column headers appear at the top of every single page. Let's return to the design view to make that work. Before getting to the actual solution to this problem, it's worthwhile showing you there's a slightly misleading option you may have encountered already, either in the Tablix Properties dialog box or in the Properties window. If I select a cell in the table and then right-click on one of the grey boxes which appears around the outside, I can cho choose to view either Tablix or Tablix Properties, I'm never quite sure of the pronunciation for that. And then on the dialog box, you'll see that there are lovely check boxes available for repeating header rows on each page, or repeating header columns on each page, or keeping headers visible while scrolling. The sad thing is that these have absolutely no effect on a basic table. 
you'll see those same options repeated if I simply select the table itself by dragging a box around it. You can see the same properties appear in the properties window. So repeat column headers, repeat row headers. If I set either or indeed both of these to true just by double clicking on the word false, you can see that when I run the report, it has absolutely no effect on the table whatsoever. I can still see that on the second and third pages that the headers don't appear. And if I were to scroll up and down that nothing would happen either. Those options do have an effect, but sadly not on a basic table. If you remember from a previous video, Tablix or Tablix is made up of three different items, tables, lists, and a matrix. So those options do have some effect, just not on a basic table. So let's set those back to false so that they don't interfere with what we're about to do, or at least we can prove that what we're about to do is the thing that has the correct effect. And then we'll show you how to solve this properly. The real solution to this problem lies in the grouping panel at the bottom of the screen. If you can't see the grouping panel, you may need to head to the view menu and tick the box next to grouping to make it visible. Once you've done that, you should see that the details or alternative details of the structure of items that belong to your report appear in here. So currently, all I have access to is a single details item. If I click on that in the grouping panel, I should see that the corresponding item gets selected in the section in the table itself in the report body. You'll see that there's, although it looks as though I've got a text box selected in the table, the properties window tells me I have something very different selected here. I have something called a tablet or tablex member. Had I just selected the text box by itself, the properties window shows me I have a text box selected called the title with completely different properties. So it's very important that you make sure you're using the grouping panel for what we're about to do next. Currently, the grouping panel is only giving me access to the details row of my table. And what I really want to select is the header row. In order to make that visible, I need to switch the grouping panel into advanced mode. And I can do that using this tiny little drop down arrow just in the top right hand corner of the grouping panel. If I click there, another option appears called advanced mode. And if I click advanced mode, I'll see some new items appear in both the row groups and the column groups area. The four static items that have appeared in the column groups area correspond to the four individual column headers. The static item which has appeared above the details item in the row groups panel corresponds to the entire header row. And that's the item that I want to select. So I'm going to click on the static item above the details item in the row groups panel. Now that I've selected the correct item, I can change one of its properties in the properties window. And it's a fairly obviously named property once you see it. Repeat on new page. It's currently set to false and I can change that to true just by double clicking on the word false. Once I've done that, I can run my report again. And now when I scroll between the different pages of the report, I'll see that my column headings, as if by magic, remain visible on every single page. Now, although you can see the column headers when you navigate between pages, the column headers do disappear when you scroll down on any given page. So they scroll past the top of the page, making it difficult to see what's going on. The solution to this is very similar to the approach we've just taken to make the headers appear on each page. Let's head back to the design view and start by selecting the static item which corresponds to the column headers of that table. The name of the property is less obvious this time. It's called fixed data. If you're not sure what a property actually does, you can select it in the properties window and a brief description appears at the bottom of the screen. You can change the height of that description area by clicking and dragging so you can actually read what it contains. Fixed data, we need, we need to set this from false to true. If I double click the word false to set the property to true and then run the report again, this time I'll see that my headers still appear at the top of each page. But this time when I scroll downwards on a single page, I'll see that my headers remain visible as well. Changing these properties for the column headers does affect a little bit what we can do with other rows that we insert into the table header section. Let's insert a new row above the current headers by right clicking next to the column headers, choosing insert row and choosing above. You'll see that a new static item appears in the grouping panel corresponding with this, to this new row that we've just inserted. I'm going to select all four cells by clicking and dragging, and then I'm going to merge those cells together by clicking the merge button. 
I'll type in a quick title for this cell, movie list or movie table, something like that. And then I'll change its formatting properties to make it stand out a little. I'll give it a darker background color and a lighter font color and maybe make the font bold and centered. Having done that, I'm going to attempt to run the report, but I'm not going to have much success with this. If I run the report, I'll get an error message. This is to do with the uh, the fixed data property. I can't fix the data of a row or fix the other uh, the column headers below the table header without also fixing the overall table header. If I click OK and head back to the design view, I've basically got to change the same properties for my new table header row, my static item in the grouping panel, to the same values as those for the column headers. You'll probably see already if I select the top static item here corresponding to my merged header cell that the repeat on new page property has already been set to true. So it's trying to show the table header at the top of each page in the same way the column headers are. But the fixed data property also needs to be set to true as well. So I'm going to change that to true and then I can run the report. And this time I can see that my report does indeed run and I get both of my static rows, my table header and my column headers at the top of each page and they both remain visible as I scroll down on any given page. So there we go, that's how to create repeating and scrolling headers in a table in a report. It's not too difficult to do once you know which options to look for, it's just that the options you're looking for aren't that easy to find. Hopefully this video has helped you out with that. Thanks for watching, see you next time.